This is the final uh, epoxy resin video for thermoset resins. We will talk about formulation principles, fillers, and properties and applications of epoxy resins. So we talked about reactive diluents with unsaturated polyesters. Uh, these are often used in epoxies as well. Uh, and they're used for the same reason. Uh, if it's a reactive diluent, it can uh, participate in the reaction. If it's non-reactive, it's just to reduce viscosity or allow, allow for higher loading of fillers. But um, they're also incorporated here in both reactive and non-reactive forms. Uh, please enjoy this high quality graphic, but you can see how the uh, diluent percent by weight affects the viscosity in this um, vintage graph. Here are some reactive diluents. Uh, all of them have an epoxy ring in them or because they can participate in the epoxy reaction. So you'll see that that um, glycetyl or oxirane ring present in each of these. Epichlorohydrin, even though it can participate in making DGEBA, can also be used as a reactive diluent. Butyl glycetyl ether, allyl glycetyl ether, cresyl glycetyl ether, phenyl glycetyl ether, and styrene oxide, uh, the one that breaks the trend in terms of naming, um, can all participate as reactive diluents. Uh, at normal levels, these don't degrade mechanical properties, uh, but they extend the pot life and they decrease the exotherm. All things that are, can be advantageous. Uh, once again, we have a vintage uh, figure for you, so you can see the effect of the incorporation of the diluent and the, uh, and the effect on the pot life. So um, the exotherm that results, water absorption, the final one, flexural strength, and weight loss um, at 200 Celsius. So you can see this, uh, the correlation. Non-reactive diluents uh, just dilute the, the uh, system. Uh, they act as secondary plasticizers and they don't participate in, in the reaction. They are non-reactive. They're mainly used for viscosity reduction, cost reduction, uh, extension of pot life, and decrease in exotherm. But these can degrade the properties uh, if their concentration gets too high including mechanical, electrical, and chemical resistance properties. Here are some non-reactive diluents. Uh, diactyl phthalate, dibutyl phthalate, typical plasticizers, um, styrene, xylene, and toluene, and peripheral alcohol. So again, these are mainly to decrease exotherms, decrease viscosity, but not participate in the actual reaction during curing. Uh, making a resin more flexible is something that is also of interest for epoxy resins. Um, if you increase the flexibility, you also increase the toughness and the impact strength, uh, and you can do that by lowering viscosity. Uh, but flex making something more flexible can also uh, reduce other properties. Most instances, modifiers have a lower cost than the epoxy resin, so they're also used as extenders. And typical polymers used in blends for impact properties or enhancement modification. These are some of the resins that can be used for flexibilization. Polyamides, polyesters, PVC, polyurethanes, silicones, acrylics, uh, acrylonitrile butadiene resins, and polysulfides. So if you have an epoxy with a polyamide for flexibility, uh, your impact strength is three times higher than just the epoxy resin alone. Uh, lower heat deflection temperature, lower compressive strength, similar dielectric constant, and uh, a, a higher uh, dissipation factor. Fillers are used in epoxy resins, just like in most of the other uh, resins we talk about, whether that be thermoplastic or thermoset. Uh, these are often used for cost reduction. Epoxies are expensive. Uh, lower exotherm, shrinkage reduction, strength enhancement, and lower the, the coefficient of thermal expansion. Uh, typically, there's no reaction between an uncured epoxy resin and the filler. And there's two types of fillers for epoxy resin, reinforcing and non-reinforcing. Reinforcing fillers are for improvement in mechanical properties like impact strength, tensile strength, and compressive strength. These include fiberglass, graphite, polyaramid, like Kevlar, uh, mica, and wood flour. So these enhance properties in, rather than just extending the formulation. A non-reinforcing filler uh, is typically for thermal and electrical properties, cost reduction, density control, and lubricity. Um, these are powdered metals, alumina, silica, talc, calcium carbonate, barium sulfate, or carbon and graphite powders. Colorants and dyes are also used. Uh, typically when you're talking about um, plastics overall, you're talking about pigments and not dyes. Uh, dyes are transparent, pigments are opaque. Um, 
And uh, epoxies have a natural tendency to yellow, and so the fact that pigments are opaque can prevent some of that yellowing. Um, typically, pigments are preferred for the coloring of epoxy systems for white, usually deal with barium sulfate or titanium dioxide, carbon black for dark colors, and iron oxide for orange, red, or yellow colors. Flame retardancy uh, can also be formulated into epoxy resins through the use of curing agents or fillers and additives. Uh, typical curing agent flame retardants are organophosphorus polyols or halogenated anhydrides. Additives can include alumina trihydrate or triphenylphosphine. Other additives that are used for flame retardants and epoxies can be antimony oxide, zinc borate, but these are typically used in combinations with other flame retardants. Mold release agents are important, uh, and oftentimes silicones, polyethylene films, cellophane or waxes are used. Uh, silicones are preferred due to their higher thermal oxidative stability. Epoxies are pretty versatile, and so depending on the formulation or the type of epoxy, you can have very wide-ranging um, properties. Typically, you get extreme toughness. Um, without modification, you have low impact strength, uh, so if you flexibilize those, you get much better impact strength. Uh, a wide range of tensile strengths up to 30,000 PSI, and fairly high compression strength up to 48,000 PSI. They have excellent dimensional stability. Uh, this is due to an absence of volatiles. Uh, there's very little mold shrinkage and uh, very little elongation. Their coefficient of, coefficient of linear expansion is very low. Um, they have excellent thermal resistance and uh, thermal conductivity, and their heat deflection temperature can range depending on the type of epoxy you're using. Um, chemical solvent and water resistance, um, they can be susceptible to chlorinated hydrocarbons, trichloroethylene, methylene chloride, carbon tet, um, and they can range in moisture absorptivity. There's a lot of hydroxyls there, so they can pick up moisture. They generally have excellent uh, electrical insulating characteristics. Epoxies overall are excellent adhesives. There's a lot of polar groups on there, lots of OH groups upon curing, and those AOH groups like to interact with a lot of surfaces, so they wet a lot of different surfaces. Um, epoxy resins cure without the evolution of volatiles, without the use of added heat or pressure, and, without, and with minimum shrinkage. Um, but the high cost of epoxies can limit their use as adhesives. Uh, in terms of very large articles, the melamine formaldehyde and phenol formaldehyde are used instead for very large uh, things that require uh, a weatherability. Epoxy resins have five major areas of applications, uh, those being coatings, insulation, construction, adhesives, and composites. Epoxy resins are used very heavily in coatings because they provide chemical resistance, toughness, durability, and adhesiveness to the overall coating. You want your, uh, your, want your coating to stick to your surface. Uh, UV cured epoxy resins are used in printed circuit boards. Uh, the automotive industry uses them for protective coatings and primers and paints. These are used in chemical tank linings. The inside coating of beer cans is an epoxy coating. Pipelines are coated with these and medical and dental uh, usages. There's an epoxy enamel coating for teeth, uh, for sealants to protect your um, adult uh, molars. They're often done to children after their, their first adult molars come in. Uh, the current trend is trying to conform with EPA anti-pollution guidelines, so using water-based, high solids, solventless systems. And um, you can do that very effectively with epoxy resins. You can avoid uh, VOCs, um, and, and they, they don't give off a volatile when they cure. In insulation, uh, epoxies are good for insulation because they have high resistivity, low dissipation factor, high mechanical properties, and low thermal conductivity, and a high strength to weight ratio. In glass filled casting epoxies, you get good um, volume resistivity and, and dissipation factor and low thermal conductivity. Epoxies are also good for encapsulation and coating of transistors, switches, coils, and integrated circuits. Uh, new casting methods for epoxy provide dimensional stability. They eliminate stress buildup in the resulting part and surface defects. An example of this is uh, simultaneous interpenetrating network structures uh, to develop new epoxy encapsulants. So it's the simultaneous polymerization of two or more different monomers to form a three-dimensional network structure. And these have added resistance to crack growth, so epoxy and polyembule acrylate or epoxy and silicones. They've been doing uh, SINs type polymerization with those systems. In construction, epoxy resins are good because of their toughness, ease of application, and excellent adhesion to a wide variety of materials. Uh, these are used in air, airport runway repairs. They're used in industrial porofloor systems. 
Uh, Sand-filled epoxy has excellent oil, water, and solvent resistance and very good adhesion to concrete. Uh, it's good in resin transfer molding for parts such as propeller blades, industrial fan blades, and support beams. Epoxies are used in medical and dental adhesives. Bonding and filling of enamel, dentin, and cementum in your teeth. Uh, you can bond microscopic hollow spheres of PS resins known as syn syntactic forms. So these are core sandwich for replacing rotten wood in old buildings. And the support, it's uh, supplied as a putty form and troweled into cavities where they set and harden. Um, I think uh, the people who painted my house used approximately a case of this particular material uh, on my house. The United States Air Force uses epoxy bonding in place of rivets, uh, so they are gluing jet fighters together. Uh, automotive industry also uses epoxy riv uh, adhesives instead of metal joints. Um, doing that reduces noise. It eliminates the hazard uh, materials such as lead in welding. It also reduces weight and increases fuel efficiency. Epoxy composites are typically made with glass, graphite, or polyaramid, so uh, aromatic polyamid Kevlar re reinforcement. Uh, they have good thermal resistance, electrical resistance, uh, chemical resistance, and a high strength to weight ratio. They're used highly in the space industry, printed circuits, so semiconductors or integrated circuits, tanks and pressurized vessels, pipes, and the novel use of graphite epoxy as a replacement for wood in violins. Thus concludes the application of epoxy resins. Please answer your questions uh, for this particular video.